Spectrum News in 90 seconds this Friday. Glad you're with us today. I'm Merrick Levy. Road repairs are in the works after sections were washed away due to the punishing waves from Nicole. This is a look at Flagler County and the A1A. Crews, though, have not yet provided a timeline for the fixes. The NASA Causeway sustained some damage from the storm. A wind gust of 89 miles per hour was recorded at the pad where the Artemis 1 rocket sits. And that launch has been pushed back to Wednesday. A power on test, though is happening today and any required repairs will begin if there are any found. Central Florida airports back to normal or just about there. Jets weren't allowed to take off or land during the storm until it passed. Orlando's big airport and Orlando Sanford International Airport all at full operations today. They'll call your airline if you do have travel plans today. But the weather much, much calmer than it was 24 hours ago. Certified meteorologist Chris Gilson, good to see you. Good to see you, Eric. As we look at the noon hour here weather-wise, we do have some rain locally to talk about and even a little bit of lightning pop popping up on Clashon 13. The big picture here at the noon hour is Nicole is moving through portions of Georgia and South Carolina. You can see that rain shield stretching up into the Ohio River Valley into eastern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. Wind still noticeable out of the west and southwest today in that southwesterly flow triggering some showers, even a little bit of lightning here over Lake County in this band of rain with some embedded storms heading right over Claremont and then setting up toward Ocoee and western Orange County as we go through the next 10 to 20 minutes. Right now, temperatures are in the low to mid 80s. We'll break down that weekend forecast coming up at 1211, Eric. And we will see you then, Chris. Thank you very much. Today, the first full day of cleanup after Nicole ripped through Florida. And for a lot of people, and it's an extension of the work they'd been doing since Hurricane Ian six weeks ago. Homes along the east coast of Florida battered, some cases destroyed. Hurricane Ian damaged the seawall, left homes an open risk for Nicole. And well, unfortunately, you can see the end result. Spectrum News 13 has live team coverage for you at noon today. We have Ashley Mills set up a new Smyrna Beach, where a number of buildings are unsafe. But we begin our coverage this hour with Nicole Griffin in Wilbur by the Sea along the coast, where unfortunately those homes are destroyed, and it's just a heartbreaking scene, Nicole. It's so heartbreaking. I'm standing at one of dozens of properties that were damaged here along the coastline in Wilbur by the Sea. Take a look behind me here. The devastation is just unbelievable. We spoke to one property manager who says it has not even hit her yet as she works to save what she can. I just started falling. Property manager Krista Goodrich has still not processed the destruction on the shoreline in Wilbur by the Sea. They had a huge patio all the way down to there that you could hang out on. Their steps survived in, so they still had concrete steps after in. We had zero concern that this building was going, and here it is. As CEO of Salty Dog Vacations, she manages 130 properties and is working hard to help her tenants save as many things as they can. The contractors warn her the fractured building has moved an inch closer to the edge since this morning. It might not have been that that wide. Okay, so we need to move quick to get this stuff out. In Volusia County, 49 buildings have been deemed unsafe since the storm. This was the living room. She had just decorated it. Um, you can see her TVs in the ceiling. While Goodrich works to find her tenants new places to live, with so much devastation, she worries about the future of her business if there are no buildings left to manage. This is supposed to be paradise. So, and it is still paradise, and we will rebuild it to an even better paradise, but it's just heartbreaking. Goodrich says she manages several properties that she hasn't even been able to access yet. However, she is bracing for the worst, expecting more of her properties to sink into the ocean. Now, I want to send things over to my colleague Ashley Mills, who is in New Smyrna Beach, where more buildings are being deemed unsafe. Right, Nicole, where I'm standing used to be sand. There used to be dunes here. Obviously not anymore. All of that washed away. You can tell this big chunk of earth was removed. Uh, just how much? Well, look at that grassy area. It now rests above my head, that common area of Las Bristas Commons. These are the condos that were deemed no longer safe to live in. So these buildings on either side of me have been evacuated. Look how the water just undermined the area under the foundation of this building. We spoke with people who live there. 
They're concerned, obviously, because, in fact, they were supposed to have a seawall put in next month. So really unfortunate timing there. But around town, around New Smyrna Beach now, this was the scene all along the seawall. Beachfront properties really damaged. A local watering hole chases. The tiki hut there all but fell into the ocean. We spoke with a neighbor who said it was very disappointing to watch. Take a listen. The power of this ocean is incredible. When it's, it's, when it's angry, watch out. Back to these condos here, though. There are separate buildings, several condemned. Those living here are now out, and they were so close to putting up that seawall. They hope they can still manage to do that. Now, when things started looking bad yesterday morning and even the night before, before the storm, the building was evacuated, but a couple people did remain. I heard from one of them. Lots of stress, um, sadness and stress. Um, and then once the high tide kind of, you know, stop and start going back out, I felt safe. Really sad, really sad. Been here 20 years and uh, great place and we'll rebuild it. And we're meeting engineers and our seawall guys out here today, so. And county officials are out and about. We've seen several crews out around town inspecting buildings and roads and bridges, really assessing the damage in the wake of Nicole. But back here, that board member and resident who's so devastated about what happened here and all of this erosion, he says on Tuesday, big trucks will be here with tons and tons of loads of sand to start filling this gaping hole back in. For now, live in New Smyrna Beach, Ashley Mills, Spectrum News 13. All right, Ashley and Nicole, thank you very much. Coming up for you at the bottom of the hour, we're going to be talking with Asha Wildman and Molly Durig, as well as Nick Popham with a closer look at what's happening in other parts of the coastline. And I want you to see this. These are crisscrossing tracks of Nicole and Ian, which is eerily close to what happened in 2004. Charlie and Jean. Those were two of the storms, uh, two of the four storms actually that hit Florida back in 04. Charlie and Jean were also 43 days apart. You can see how similar the tracks are. Well, crews are working to get the Christmas tree uprighted once again at Cranes Roost Park in Altamont Springs. The wind knocked it down yesterday. The tree is expected to be lit at the uh, holiday event still on December 3rd, but there you can see uh, crews in their uh, bright fluorescent clothing and the cherry picker trying to get that tree back up. And you can keep an eye on what's happening with uh, all of the storm-related updates as well as Clystron 13 for any kind of bad weather or good for that matter. You can see it all in the Spectrum News app in the weather section. There is so much more ahead for you this afternoon as we continue our post-Nicole coverage. We want you to be aware of debris and flooding and other dangers that are in the water. We're going to have a drive time update and uh, Jerry Hume will tell you how to navigate the streets that may be uh, covered and dangerous. We also have uh, certified meteorologist Chris Gilson in the Weather Center. Chris, we were talking about how much calmer it is today, but there is still some rain out there as we see. Yeah, no Nicole rain, but we are pulling in some rain around the system as it moves away from our region. We'll break down those rain chances for your Friday and that weekend forecast when we come back with Clystron 13.